Hi, I know I've been gone a long time, but stick with me and I'm going to show you how to carve a glow-in-the-dark mushroom. So I'm going to be doing power carving. I'm not going to be whittling with knives. Uh, I just started about three weeks ago, but I've already got a pretty, kind of a few pieces that uh, are okay. I mean, for an amateur, I think they're pretty good. But I'm going to show you at least what I learned, and some of you guys watching know a lot more than I do. Feel free to comment about how to improve stuff. Anyway, if you know uh, me, I have not had, shoot, I don't think I've done a video in almost a year. So I've been hiding out. I started a practice again, and I've been seeing patients, and then I've been wood carving. I just picked it up, and I'm like obsessed with it. So I've been wood carving for the last uh, three, three weeks or so, just obsessively at nights and on the weekends. And a big shout out goes to, uh, Jordy Johnson, his channel, he's the one that inspired me to figure out how to do it. He basically has a channel that shows noobs how to get started from ground zero. So once I watched that, I was like, you know, that doesn't, maybe I could do it. It doesn't look that hard. So that's what happened. Uh, and I'm going to talk more about Jordy in the video so you can check that out. But let's dive into the piece. Hi, welcome back. I know I've been gone a long time. I am doing a wood carving video today just for fun because so I come back into practice and uh, on my weekends and nights I've been a, become obsessed with uh, wood carving but I've only been doing it a few weeks I think it's my third week so I'm no expert I am don't take this for granted and a lot of you watching are much better wood carvers than me feel free to leave comments but I decided to do something that um, a lot of people seem to like and this is a glow-in-the-dark mushroom and I'll show you this is like you know a little 3d mushroom looking thing and uh, it's not really that hard to make I'm gonna walk you through it today and then you put glow-in-the-dark paint over it and I'll show you what that looks like and it's supposed to look like the um, original and I'll, I'll flash a little picture of what they look like the bioluminescent mushrooms now that being said really when you look at this there's a couple different things we got going on here. Um, the stem, the cap, and the gills. When you're trying to make this, the, most of the pictures I looked at about bioluminescence, the gills seem to point, you know, uh, this direction. They seem to sit on the side. So I tried to make it as realistic as I could. We're going to work on the gills. I'm going to show you some stuff on how to do it. And uh, hopefully it turns out okay. And that's it for the first part of this um, that's it for the first part of this video let's talk about a few things though there are if you're interested in wood carving there are some very basic things you need number one is some sort of mask because this stuff will get in your lungs the sawdust and it will cause all kinds of problems like sarcoidosis or whatever so also, sawdust is your life here. You're going to have it everywhere. And you can get these. These are like two bucks, but try to get the ones that wrap around the sides. Because otherwise, you'll be carving and the dust will get in your eyes and it'll drive you crazy and you won't be able to get it out while you're carving. Ear protection. These little Dremel things are loud. When you're carving through wood, you want to protect your ears. So it's going to look like, um, almost like if you've ever seen those guys that work on chainsaws, stuff chainsaw art they have a ton of things and lastly the most important i think is these are gloves that you'll see sometimes people use in kitchens to shuck oysters or um they protect you from knives they got i guess some sort of metal polymer in it that uh can resist getting cut and as i was learning you know i've only been doing this a few weeks i had some pretty big burrs like this puppy get loose and hit my thumb and if I hadn't been wearing this I would have had a good chunk of thumb missing so I am uh, I since you're gonna learn anyway and start learn to do it with gloves on I do everything with gloves on and I think I have lost control a bit about three times that it has saved me from taking a chunk out of myself and what will happen is these will wind up in the glove and it's kinda like those chainsaw pants where it just wraps it and it stops the motor you gotta turn off the motor and unwrap it it doesn't really like deflect it or something. It, it more like ties up the blade so it doesn't cut into you. So be sure to always wear safety stuff. This is for real. 
Okay. Okay, so let's get down because some of you guys are probably already like, yeah, 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 get to the good stuff. Um, what we're going to do is, oh, that's, that's my eye totem. I've been practicing eyes. Eyes are hard. The struggle is real, for real. Look at these things. All right, so we are going to work on some basics. I'm going to show you a few basics, and then we're just going to dive in. So let me show you how to lay out your piece. Okay, so I have this piece of white pine. Um, oh, big shout out first. There is a guy named Jordy Johnson. He's a Canuck, a really funny, kind of crazy guy that does wood carvings on YouTube. And I would have never, ever started doing this if I hadn't watched his channel. Because what he does is he breaks it down for beginners and tells you about the bits, shows you some basic stuff. So you can start carving and it looks halfway decent without much skill level. Uh, big shout out to you, Jordy. I would have never done this without your channel and your community. And uh, I, I'm just, uh, go check out his channel. I'll link it. It's just really cool. So shout out to Jordy. That being said, I want to show you, this is a white pine. And what Jordy said was the best wood's free wood. And he's right. As you're practicing, just grab anything you can grab. Now white pine's a little harder than regular pine, I'm finding out. It's kind of like a middle wood. It's not quite soft, not quite hard. So what this was, was um, they used to use these to, uh, I went to a log place, uh, and they used these to set logs on to dry out. So I just cut them up about four inch, and I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make candlestick holders with these things. So I'll drill a hole in the top and make a candle, put a, you know enough room for a candle on it. So that being said, let's talk about what I'm going to do. Is First thing we're going to do is I'm going to kind of round this down because this point is too dramatic it will actually be a pain to get kind of a smooth looking hood you want a nice hood and if it's too pointy it's just not gonna work so I'm gonna use I, I a lot of people you watch especially if you go to Jordy they have real good carver and um, Dremel tools I got this go waxy it's like the knockoff but it's 240 watt it's pretty powerful so I, uh, I had a flex shaft, but the flex shaft broke like the third or fourth day I had it. It's not a it's not good flex shaft that comes with this thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, change out the bit, and I'm going to start with a large burr. And the reason I like this one is it can handle a quarter of an inch burr. So for you guys that don't know what I'm talking about... Look at the size difference of these burrs. So this is an eighth of an inch. And this is a quarter, so it's much thicker. I'm going to use this round nose, and it's going to let me just kind of shave the wood. We're going to use a big one to shave the wood a little bit, and then I'll get back to business here, and I'll come back and draw it on and show you how to lay everything out. So here we go. <laughs> So I'm going to set this to, uh, let's see, I guess it has a wheel here. Ah, here we go. I'm going to set it to max. Okay, so most of these rotary tools only cut one direction. So you'll see that I'm always pulling towards myself if I'm using my right hand. If I switch it over to the left, I'm going away. So, um... If you try to go the opposite direction, it'll usually skip over the wood. It might cut a little, but it's not going to do a good job. All right, so you need to sharpen your pencil sharp. Uh, obviously, sharpen your pencil. So we're going to do this a little bit. Okay, good enough. Here's what we're going to do. You want to draw this out. We're going to plan out the hood first. So I guess this one was more like this. We can do that style again to make it easy. So you're going to basically see that the front, the hood of the mushroom is far forward and the gills are back. So you're going to want to start off by drawing a hood. 
And with mushrooms, you want to try not to make it too phallic. Mushrooms come out really phallic. So, here we go. I'm going to draw the top of the hood. And what's cool about mushrooms is they can be a weird shape. And people are okay with that. Like, mushrooms in nature are not perfect. They're a mess. I'm going to probably make these a little bigger, actually. So the hood will start from one edge and get bigger in the middle. So we'll make this a little bigger just so we have more room for the gills. You're going to start with... Um, you need to leave some room for the, the stem and the, the top of the gill so you can show some... Uh, Sorry, the top of the hood, so you can show some gills. So the stem will pretty much come here and here. And that's about it. So that's where we're going to start. And what you want to do is you want to block out, you want to dig deep into this section and make sure that you leave the stem so you don't hit the stem. Uh, that being said, I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so I've changed up my drawing a little bit. So I'm going to make a nice deep area for the back side of the mushroom. We'll have this hood up here. And then I've turned this, I'm going to actually put a little turn on the stem just to make it more interesting. Okay, so there's what it's going to look like. Let's get started. So the first thing I want to do is I want to block out, I want to dig this area here. You want to dig this out deep, right here, and right here, and also go around all the edges, so you can kind of get a reference of where you're going to be. You don't want to dig the stem. Don't dig that yet. What I'm going to do to get in there is I've got to move a lot of wood. I mean, you're talking about, this is about an inch and a half in. So I'm going to use a larger round burr. You want to kind of go round, and you, you want to make it concave so that there is some gills going up, then they turn and come back to you. So we're trying to make this dig like a hole. A concave hole. Alright, so that's where we're going to start. I'm going to start here. Then I'm going to go around with a smaller burr and trace some of this stuff out. And right there is a good example of why I wore this. This jumped caught me and hit this and I still have a thumb so if I wasn't wearing gloves that would have sucked just want to point that out notice I'm pulling in and around like I'm trying to make that dip motion okay so that's it to start I'm gonna change it over to um, you can do it either way here. You can use this thing's called a dovetail, and this is called a flame bit. This is kind of like your universal tip. It does all sorts of stuff. I like this one to um, start my edges, so we're going to use this. So I'll be back after I change all that out. Ah, that's the only problem with gloves is they stick. <laughs> your burrs stick to you. Okay, so now I've changed it over to the Extreme Cut Saw Dovetail. This is 1 8 inch. Hopefully you see that alright. Also, I don't have anything fancy. Um, I'm just using a shop vac. I wish I had a dust collection system, but this is old school. So, you know, it's what you can do. And if you're going to wood carve, I'm quickly finding out that... Uh, there's no escape. Sawdust is everywhere. It's your new life. So, this is what happens.
Okay, there's kind of the sketch out. You can see what's coming. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut deep around this to make it stand out more. But one thing I learned is if you're going to put a uh, candle holder, you need to plan ahead on that and usually drill it in the beginning. So I'll use a paddle bit, a one and a half inch. And it's really kind of a pain. And it would be great if I had a drill press. Also, this sort of thing, these are annoying, but what you can do is with like your dovetail, you could just shave these off, these little extra pieces. You don't have to get a saw. What's cool about the dovetail is it has a flat it maybe I should stop. What's cool about the dovetail is it has a flat end, so if you control it well, you can use it to smooth stuff as well. It's a pretty neat little uh, burr. I like this one a lot. So what I'm going to do now is I'm probably going to switch back to this, drill it out, drill this section, drill this section, and kind of like the old one, I'll leave some just to make it more interesting. I'll leave some of the piece. Uh, but I'm going to have to get back in here pretty good, so and we're going to have to go deep on this. So I'm going to drill a lot of this out. All right, I'll be back. Okay, so here we go. We're going to cut this section out of here. Okay, something I forgot to mention is, if you notice the final piece, the bottom lip is actually pretty far back. So we're going to have to cut this section out deeper and this section deeper. So let's do that. Now what we're going to do is, I'm using this very aggressive bit. It's a big bit and it takes wood out fast. But if you notice, it's hard to control. Sometimes it jumps, sometimes it bucks. If it catches too much, it's, it's kind of a dangerous bit to burr to use. Uh, but boy, it does the job fast. So the next part I'm going to do is I'm going to shave this part down so I can make gills in here. And you're trying to make it, again, concave this motion here. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to come in here and kind of concave it. You see where we're going with this? Okay. So now that the rough wood, like I've, I've done a lot of the deep cuts. So we've done a, a deep one here, a deep one here deep around the sides. I might need to go a lot deeper on these, uh, especially if you wanted to get a 3D pop. One thing Jordy uh, taught me was you always want to undercut. I'm going to show you what that is, but you go underneath the piece to make it look 3D. So we're going to do that in a minute. Uh, I'm just going to do a few more pieces and, and go a little deeper around the sides. Okay, because of the way this block's shaped, I've actually had to carve some of the block away. And you'll see I did that in the other one. And also, I think it makes it pop more 3D. So don't be afraid to attack the sides if you're going to go for a 3D look. All right, now I'm running into a problem because my candlestick's going to have to go into the mushroom a little bit. So I'm going to do that now before I go any further. I'm going to drill into the candlestick and uh, make sure that I got enough room for this candlestick. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, so I've managed to drill a candle holder in here, but I actually had to go into the bark a little bit. So, plan ahead! There we go. Alright, let's get back down to work. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to switch burrs 
we're going to be doing a bunch of undercutting. So I'm going to use this guy. It is uh, a cut saw, one eighth extreme taper burr. And uh, Jordy, also I learned about all these cut saw burrs from Jordy. Um, check out his channel. I really dig it. But cut saw, man, it's worth it to buy a few good burrs you're going to use all the time and get high quality ones instead of the ones that just come with like a Dremel. All right, so we're going to do this and we're going to cut underneath everything. All right, here we go. Okay, so I've carved around this. I gave the top some shape a little bit. Hopefully you can see that. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the bottom cap in. The bottom cap will give me an idea how far deep we're going. I'm probably going to shave this down and go a little deeper just to give it more of a 3D look. Uh, so I'll shave these down and then we will... Uh, move up to the top cap and kind of concave that out a little more. Alright, the next thing I'm going to do is start carving the actual stem in. And what you'll do is you'll use the same bit and just keep going on both sides until a hole punches through. You want to go deep into the mushroom so you have enough stem. Uh, hopefully you can see that from the side. So I'm going to start drilling a hole through it. And then I'll do another one under the cap probably just so the cap will stand out. Okay, here we go. All right, you can see we're almost through here and here. We're getting close. So I'm just going to keep working it at an angle. And it gives you this nice concave little thing we're, we're making. I'm drilling downward to get under it. You'll see the bit just kind of wants to do it. But it's going to fight. And again, this thing, if you'll notice, it's skipping a lot. Uh, just be safe and wear gloves. But this probably would have been better with a, a flex shaft, I'm sure. But the power you have being directly connected is awesome, though. You can really move wood quick. Okay. So I'm through. You can do that. And then what I'll do is I'll go up and I'll shape the stem a little bit. So like I did with this one, I'm going to shape it. Maybe narrow it a little. And, uh, and then we'll start cutting the gills in and shaping the mushroom a little more. Okay. So now I'm going to shape the under the cap a little better and clean this up. Okay, you can see it's cut away, and I didn't cut all the way through this one like I did this one. Um, I might, but because I bent this, I'm not sure if I'll have enough wood to keep it stable. I'm going to dig a little bit, but if it doesn't feel right, I'm going to stop. Remember, in wood carving, you can't replace it, so <laughs> you only dig as far as you want, you're comfortable. Okay, so you can see I actually did go through. That gives that bottom lip more 3D look. 
Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start smoothing this out, drawing in the gills, and just making it pretty. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to use is this round burr. It's an extreme cuts all one eighth round burr. And so what I'm going to do is I put it on this Dremel eight uh, eight thousand one hundred. This is actually one that you can charge and it's portable. It doesn't have a cord. I picked these up at Walmart on clearance. They're about 85 bucks, but on clearance they were 40 bucks. So I picked up two of them because I got tired of changing bits left and right and left and right. And uh, sometimes it really saves you to just have a few. Now they're not real powerful, but they rock at cleanup work. And it's really nice to have some battery without cord. The only hard part is it's like a lighter. Sometimes because it has a safety feature, you have to turn it off and on a few times to get it to go. Like, no. Second one, it works. Alright, so you can get an idea how much more smooth that is now and how this thing has a nice lip. So now the next part we're going to do is draw on the gills. And the gills really pull the whole thing together. Um, oh, I see a spot I missed. Also, did you notice that when I clean up I vacuum the gills of these machines, the Dremels? It actually helps to keep the sawdust out of those little ports. So the next thing I'm going to do is put the gills in, and I'm going to be using this. This is actually a metal. Uh, it is not extreme. This is just uh, from a metalwork kit. It is a square piece. So it's not aluminum. It's metal. So with carving, you have kind of like extreme burrs to move a lot of wood. Metal ones are kind of a middle ground. Um, and then you have diamond burrs that are like little dust that doesn't uh let's see here's a diamond burr and these things don't take off much at all they're for real smooth work so this is a middle kind of thing what i'm going to do is put it on its edge and draw lines and cut on edge now the way to make this thing look cool is it's a radius it's kind of like think of it like a bicycle your everything needs to connect to the middle and you're going up to the lip to the lip, to the lip, to the lip, to the lip. And we'll go around the best we can. Now, sometimes you'll see me take two or three passes because the deeper gills look better. And if you accidentally, like, screw up and hit the lip, no big deal. We'll sand it out at the end. You can see it's starting to come along with the gills. I just got to clean them up a little. I'll go over them a few times and make them deeper. And uh, hit any spots I miss, but that's pretty much it. Okay, so you can get a good idea. Remember, the deeper you go with the gills, the better this is going to look. And the more you put in, like, here's a space right here that probably could take another gill. And uh, maybe another gill, and another gill. So I'll put a few more in just to make it look cool. Okay, so the next thing I need to do is just kind of clean up the edges. I'll go underneath this a little bit to give it more of a lip. Kind of define the lip. Hit any spots I miss, like here. Get in there a little deeper. And then I'm going to draw on the stem. So I'll teach you how to do that now. And it pretty much works just like the gills, but you're not going to do them as tight. And you're going to kind of make them more tree like. So let me show you. like this um, 
If you want, you can even cross them a little bit like Jordy does with the beards. Yeah, that gives it a little more texture. Whoa. Whoop. That gives it a little more texture. You want to make them look different than the gills, but it's a lot of the same technique. What around the edges, and what it does is it makes the gills kind of vanish a little bit, so they just kind of appear out of nowhere. They slowly have a gradual, they're coming out. Remember, your gills are the kind of star of the piece, so take your time with it. Make it look good. Okay, uh, all I got to do is cut the edges out a little better, and I'll show you the next step. Uh, a quick tip to uh, help avoid so much sanding is I'm using going back to this round burr and you can even get a uh, finer one than this but just go over the big sections with the round burr and it it really makes it so there's almost no sanding there'll be just a little so the next thing I'm going to do is sand and what I've done is Jordy over at Carbon Fusion suggested this. You buy these uh, sand paper on fabric and you cut them up and stack them together. And he uh, he shows you how to do that on his channel. You can, uh, again, I'm going to link it so you can see it. But what I want to do is go with a very gentle one. Maybe, let's see, what do we got here? Maybe the 600 to 400. You don't want to do much because the gills are really fine and you'll just kill all the detail. It'll rip it all out. So I'll put this flat wheel on and just kind of bright, just gently go over it. So I got almost everything except the very backs, and uh, I'm just going to do that with a file. So I'm going to use something called a riffler. Uh, I'm just going to find the right one. So what a riffler is, is it's a bent file. And I'm just going to pick out the little pieces in the gills here. Because not many people are going to look at the inside of a piece. Uh, but I'd like the big chunks to be out. Okay, uh, one of the last things I'm going to do before I paint it is I'm going to darken the outside and I'm going to take my gloves off of this because I don't know if they're flammable or not, but who knows. I've got a, a little safety water bucket here for a fire extinguisher. Knock off all the loose sawdust. I saw I uh, vacuumed. And all you're going to do is try to evenly pass and hit the back side. I also want to do the bottoms and tops just to tie it together. Sides a little bit. That's it. Okay, so you get a better idea that that's going to make that stand out. Uh, I might even go a little darker, actually.
Okay. So now that should make it pop more. You see, I never did that with this one. This one's just left blank, but I think that makes it pop a little better. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to paint it. I'll show you how to do that. Ooh, yeah, baby. Okay, so here's what I'm using. Uh, Rust-Oleum Glow in the Dark. So this is the one you can actually uh, you know, use as paint. They have another one that acts like spray paint that's supposed to be stronger, but I haven't used it. So I'm putting on gloves because God knows what's in this and, you know, what kind of cancerous things <laughs> make it glow. I have no idea. So you're going to use gloves. Um, Alright. I am going to stir it. And it is pretty gluey right now. Believe it or not, I still have my eye protection on because uh, I'm worried about splatter. So I keep that on. Alright, and I don't like wasting glue, so we're just going to put it right on here into the gills. Now this stuff will dry heavy. It looks like glue, but what happens is it gets absorbed in the wood and it doesn't, uh, it vanishes. So you'll see a little bit of it. I mean, it'll turn it white. And remember, anything you get, uh, anything you get this paint on will glow. So like there's a little spillage right there that I got to go wipe off or it, the, the background will glow. I want to put this on really thick and let it soak into the gills by spinning it back and forth like this. Kind of rolls in the gills. And again, the gills are the star of the piece, so you want them to really shine. Uh, you will probably have to put two to three layers to get it really, really uh, glowy. Unless you put it on super thick. So it takes, I leave this thing to dry for a day. It takes about a day for it to dry, but you get it. Anyway, you see how thick it is. It will actually, uh, like I said, I will actually leave it this thick. Uh, I mean, I, I'll spread it around a little bit. And it will dry and completely soak into the wood. Because the wood's so porous, it just soaks up whatever you put on it. And the more you have, the harder it glows. So the spots you really want to glow uh, thick are, uh, you know, put really slap it on there. And I know there's probably some people that paint that are like laughing at me going, that's not how you use a brush. And I'm sorry about that. <laughs> I, for you guys who don't know, I have almost no artistic, I didn't know I had any artistic skill. I, I sculpted a, a, just a tad in clay in high school, and I took a class in college, but we didn't do anything except screw off. I didn't learn how to, like, sculpt a nose or sculpt an eye or, you know, nothing useful. Um, so, I'm pretty much a noob. All I've done is watch a lot of videos, and then this idea I just kind of looked at the real picture and came up with. Probably somebody has done it, but I've never seen it. Uh, a Jordy just put out a, a glow-in-the-dark mushroom video, but his is uh, using light. And I had sent him a picture of this before. So hopefully he likes it. Anyway. So that's it. I'm just going to keep working the paint in it as it dries a little bit. And then after a while, I'll put in another coat. So, there you go. I'll see you in a bit. Okay, so we're pretty much done. You just might have to do one more, uh, one or two more paint layers. I'll probably do them tomorrow, and I'll show you the, uh, the after. So I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, and a big shout out again to Jordy's channel. Thanks for inspiring this.
So I forgot to charge this mushroom. I put a second thick coat on. So I'm charging it with this is a black light. I don't know if you know that it makes glow in the dark stuff charge really fast. But it doesn't last that long because I haven't charged it up much. So anyway, I'm doing this. Normally with glow in the dark stuff you have to leave it out for many hours either in the sun or in a really well lit room. Uh, and it only glows about two hours anyway. If you're lucky. So I'm charging it up. I'll see you in a minute. So I'm not sure if you can see this in the dark or not. I will put up pictures if this doesn't come out good. Could have used a, more of a charge, but you can get an idea of what's supposed to happen. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this whole thing. I hope you learned something. And go out and make some glow mushrooms. Bye. By the way, like sawdust is your life now. Look, you, you can't get this stuff out. <laughs> <laughs> Forget it. Just designate clothes you could destroy. That's it. There's, I actually vacuum. Oh yeah, if you want to see my station, this is my little station here. You can get an idea of the burrs, the setup, the dremels. I actually do have a smaller Goaxi, uh, which I use for that, for the uh, roto zip to put hairs on and stuff. But it's, it doesn't do good for a lot of powerful stuff. So, there you go. It's, uh, I use this one instead to do most of the heavy lifting. Alright. One, <laughs> one last thing. Did I mention you can't get this stuff out of your hair? If any of you guys got tips, I can't. I have salt dust everywhere all the time. I mean, look at my... <laughs> this is nothing. I've already vacuumed. Like, I've vacuumed my whole bib. You can't even see it, but yeah, so uh, long hair, it's all does. Not good. <laughs> I don't know what to do about that. Jordy, help. All right, bye. I just finished my first ever big piece. Although it's not completely done, uh, it's out of this red cedar. So you can see there's red cedar in the middle, and you can see it like popping out through the guy. He's got all these purple red streaks. Anyway, he came out pretty cool. I haven't signed him yet, and I haven't... I don't know if I should stain him. I don't really want to kill that color, but... Maybe I'll just put oil on it or something. Or leave it. I don't know. So, in the last two and a half weeks, these are all the pieces I've made. I've been practicing wood spirits, trying to get better and better. But the eyes are really hard. Um, you can see, this is where I started. This is my first piece. Second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. And you get an idea. They just keep going. Uh, so I am getting, these guys look a little stoned, but I'm getting better at the eyes. And then down here, this I, I made this guy last night. I don't know if you can see that. I made this guy last night. This is my first half face. But working on eyes there. And these are all my other weird things like mushrooms. Try to jellyfish. I don't know if that worked or not. Some owls I've been working on. And an incident holder. A little incident holder. Mushroom house. Just try to stick. Uh, more mushrooms. This was supposed to be a cat, but it looks more like a raccoon. And a Christmas tree. There you go. Alright. Oh, and that's a 2x4. I actually made that guy out of a 2x4 just to see what it was like. And it really beats up your burrs. And this is supposed to be a snail, but he's hard to see. I don't know. Carving on birch is tough. Anyway. There you go.